Well, Jamie, why don't we go ahead and get started and I'll continue to let people in as they kind of trail in here. Um, sure. So before I start, actually, do you know a way for me to be able to share my screen and still see you guys? I hate when I share my screen and then I just feel like I'm talking to no one. It's so awkward for me. There, When I share my screen, I still have like one little thing on the side, but you can't see everybody. I don't mind seeing everybody. I just like to at least like know that I'm still in it. I think you can't Google meet. You can't, but I think with zoom, you can always see like at least four or five people. Yeah. Along okay. the side. If should. anything, I might share screen and not make it a full screen and just drag a little if I have to. So yeah, I'll adjust that. As okay. All right. Go All ahead. Right. Well, I'm going to do your intro. So, okay. and I don't have your intro here, so I'm going to wing it and I'm going to give you the intro okay. that I have of you <laughs> when I, I to tell people about you. Well, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> I know. Um, all right. So welcome to Modern Agent Blueprint. Today, I am so happy because we have Jamie of Her Brand Photo. She has done my branding photos for quite some time now. And every time it's a different feel, every time is a little bit different. And she always seems to capture me in a way that I think really looks like me. It feels like me. It's a little bit fun. It's a little bit edgy. It's a little bit sexy. We have a little bit of everything. And I really love that about her. And when I see her other branding shoots that you do or that she does, it's always, everything's different. Like you'll have like some fitness chick with like her, her power shakes and all her stuff. And then you'll have somebody with their laptop and you just seem to be able to capture the person. And I think that that's one of the most important things with branding is showing who you are as a person. Um, and I think Jamie does a really good job at that. So she spoke at our first level up event that we did a couple of years ago, and mm -hmm. you did a great job. I think that really took you outside of your comfort zone a little bit okay. and pushed you because now you're speaking at many events, Yeah, which is super awesome. So I'm going to take the credit for that. You take credit for a little <laughs> bit of my logo. I take credit yes. for speaking again. The name, the name that was from me. <laughs> Jamie and I both went back and forth on Nest a little bit. So, um, well, I am so glad I'm able to call her my friend and I'm so happy to have her on here. We're going to be talking about branding and I am going to hand it over to you, Jamie. You can give another clip about who you are and all that. I'm sure it's probably in your presentation, but you can go ahead and take <laughs> over from here. You know, it's funny is I deleted the slide today. I was oh, like, wow, oh, you're on me. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I can talk about myself all day long. Yes. So my name is Jamie Vandewinkle. I am the owner of Her Brand Photo. And I really got into branding photography after feeling really stale in the family photography business after a few years. I am one of those annoying photographers that just picked up a camera. So I definitely felt kind of fake uh, in the beginning of things like, oh, these people went to school for this. And I just bought a camera one day and went for it. But I started in family photography after so many of my friends saw pictures that I was taking of my son. And they said, wow, these are really good. Would you take ones of my family? And next thing I know, I'm actually having paid clients. It was really cool. Um, but it was a struggle, um, just like in the real estate world. Photography is very oversaturated, so it was really hard for me to stand out, and I found it difficult to compete with everybody, and then it was, um, I was sacrificing things I wanted to do to try to keep up with other photographers. Um, I know you guys can't really set the percentages all the time that you get for things, but I'm allowed to set my prices, and I was finding that I had to like lower myself almost to keep up with my competition, and I was really just running on empty. It was not fulfilling anymore. The joy of it quickly burnt out when I realized how hard it was to be in a sea of other photographers and like raise my hand and hope that someone saw it. And one day a friend came to me and said, Hey, I am part of this MLM and I'm, I sell lipstick and they give us stock photos to use for all of our like campaigns and for social media. And I don't really like them. They don't feel aligned with me. And I was wondering if you would take these pictures for me um, to represent like me and the brand. And I thought, wow, this sounds like fun. I don't have to chase around any screaming children. And I don't have to deal with husbands who do not want to be at these family photo shoots. It's just <laughs> me and another woman one-on-one. -on -one. This is going to be so cool. And we just bounced around downtown Birmingham. And when I tell you guys, I just left that. I like had tears in my eyes sitting in my car thinking, this is it. Nothing felt more aligned with me than doing this branding session. I didn't even know that that's what it was at the time with my friend. 
And she passed around my name to other people. And next thing I know, I had a lot of other business owners coming to me. And I told my husband, I think I have something. I think I'm going to like sit back a little bit from the family photography and start to present myself as a branding photographer. And one of the first things that I learned about branding right away, before I even get into the slide, is how you present yourself, how you define yourself really is the brand. And that can be intimidating for some um, because it can feel uncomfortable talking about ourselves and flat out defining who we are. Um, you might feel like I said, a little inauthentic or like you don't deserve to claim that you are this expert in this field. And I realized, though, the more I tell people, oh, Jamie, what do you do? And I would say, oh, I'm I'm an assistant manager at a spa. And then I, as a hobby, I, t- I take photos. So no one heard that. They just heard that it was a hobby. I'm an assistant manager at a spa. They didn't take me seriously as a photographer until I started showing up and presenting myself as such. And then the same when it came to branding photography, I would say, well, I like dabble in this, but I'm a family photographer. It was always what I felt safe defining myself as. And it wasn't until I really got a grasp of my complete brand who I wanted to be. And I got the visual representation of it to show people until things started really taking off for me. And it just, the popularity, the bookings, everything started multiplying like crazy, the more specific and exact I was on who it is. So I'm going to show you this presentation that I built is for, let me share my screen here. For you to kind of like start a little branding kit. And if you already have an established brand on here, this is a good way to just check in and make sure that it's still aligned with you. So I'm going to hit share screen first. I'm going to share the entire screen here. Okay. I feel like my mom now with technology, like, why do I not know how to just simply pull things up? <laughs> totally. I feel the same way. I hate it's so that. embarrassing. I'll, hate I'll call my life. son and I'm like, ew, I'm that old now that I like don't know how to operate a computer. Okay. Can you guys see, I'm going to go into present mode, but it's going to, I think it's going to take you guys out. Oh, I brought you in. Yay. Okay. So we're all here, um, but we're, we're at the end. So hang on a second here. you know, troubleshooting here. Okay. Share screen. There we go. Okay. First of all, I made this whole thing in Canva. If you guys don't utilize Canva yet, um, it has made branding so simple for me. There are so many plugins. I pay, it's like 15 bucks a month, pay it. It'll be the best $15 you ever spend. I don't know if I can see chat on here. Um, does anybody not use Canva? I think everyone on here. Everyone's using it. Okay, good. I'm pretty um, sure. I know all these people. I'm pretty sure everyone's using Canva at this point. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It's just so easy to drag and drop things. And this presentation is really nice. So here's how we're going to stand out by showing up. Okay. So first, I just want you to... Think about this and you can write all these answers for you. I don't call anyone out. You can share things if you want to, but this is for you. Who are you and what do you do? It's a pretty simple question. So if somebody came up to me and asked me, and if I didn't have a grasp on my branding yet, I would say, my name is Jamie and I'm a brand photographer. It's great. I ask a lot of realtors this when I do live presentations and I'll, I will sometimes call on people and they'll say, well, I'm a realtor and I sell houses. Great. So does everyone else in the room. <laughs> so It's not really that unique. It's not really that special what it is that you're doing. So how am I going to pick one of you out of the whole crowd to work with? You're going to start to define your personal brand so that you stand out in that sea of people. And this is going to help you connect to your audience, weed out people who don't align, make it easier to show up in all the different areas because you're being your most authentic self. You're not trying to put on a hat or put on a mask and show up like you think you're supposed to. You are going to keep your advertising really cohesive so that people start to recognize. I can't tell you how many times people have said, I know one of your pictures or one of your posts before I even see the name on there because I have a really solid brand and I'm keeping it cohesive. You're going to speak directly to your ideal clients. You manage expectations, which my dad is like one of those serial entrepreneurs. He started so many different companies. And the one thing that he taught me that has always stuck out is to manage people's expectations when it comes to customer service. I think if you can talk about what it's like to work with you and what the experience is going to be start to finish, it, t- it 
makes people take their wall down a little bit. They're a little bit more open and honest with you. And you're kind of like predicting questions that they have and answer them already. You're putting them at ease. It'll make you recognizable. Like I said, they're going to be able to say, I know that was you based on the color. I knew that was you based on the language that you used. And it's going to help you find opportunities easier because if you're being so clear on who you are and someone needs you to show up for a presentation like this, they're going to think of you right away as a leading expert because you have all of these things that they're constantly seeing to reinforce that authority for you. Jamie, I have a quick question. Yeah. Are Right now, the only thing we can see is the brand yourself. Are you on a different slide? I am. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it does say your screen sharing is paused at the top. I don't, resume share? That's strange. Yeah, do resume share. Although you're sharing, because I can see brand yourself, but it shows like you're about to click on the present button. Okay, it's it's like frozen. I don't know. You might have to stop share and then go back in. Yeah, that is so, I hit resume. That is so strange. I've never seen this before. This is our life. I j make this joke on every single mastermind, but every single mastermind Zoom or Canva does not cooperate. I've never had a problem on Canva. Rate your experience? <laughs> Gonna Zero. rate it really low. <laughs> okay. Can you see me now? Because I still see resume share. It's a black screen. Oh my God. It's stuck. It's like stuck. I'm not sure. This is not in Canva. It is in zoom right now. Did you accidentally, can you hit resume at all? No, it says you're viewing Jamie's screen. Okay. So you don't see anything right now. Do you see me? Yeah. It's like a, the regular zoom screen. Okay. Share screen. One participant share your screen. I don't even know what I'm doing wrong. Okay. There. I see you. I see that so you with the camera. I got it. And you guys want to know something? I did nothing different. <laughs> nothing. So weird. Oh, so, so weird. Hit present. And then okay. See, it doesn't, it doesn't want me to present. Now it says resume share. It weird. won't let me go into present mode. Click, click on one of the other slides at the bottom. See if it'll change for us. No, nothing's changing. This is so weird. Okay. Well, try to, try to refresh Canva. Here, I, I can't go, oh, no, this is go good. into present <laughs> mode. That's okay. If you can click through at the bottom though, we can still see your slides. Okay. Wow. That is so weird. Maybe it's like inception of sharing a screen of sharing a screen. So it just won't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've never had this problem. So you guys can see it now. Yeah, we're good now. All okay. right, let's resume. <laughs> right. We're just going to go from this. All right. So now here, let's build your brand. Because again, we want to take you away from saying, I buy and sell houses for people. Great. You know, that's not that exciting. That's not that unique. So how can we get it so that people recognize something specific about you in the industry so that they come to you? And I, oh, you know, I don't know if everyone here is a realtor. I just knew that you posted in all these groups. This obviously please apply as you see fit. I just had assumed I was talking to a lot of realtors here. Everyone so, but Dan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dan doesn't count. He's basically. No. Yeah. That's the only male on the call. Yeah, I'm nobody. Don't worry about me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Enough. So what is your expertise within your market? So I want you to really focus on your strengths and skills here. You want to develop and always be refining the experience of working with you start to finish. What are you doing for your clients? And equally as important, what will you not be doing for them? Where is the value in working with you specifically? And this is where you want to brag about yourself. You really want to highlight these things. People are looking and constantly asking for X, Y, Z. So if you have something that you know that sets you apart or that is something that is unique with them, even if it doesn't really have anything to do with selling a house itself, maybe it's something that they can relate to, something that they want to be um, you know, spe they're spending a lot of time with you going in and out of these houses and talking to you. Maybe there's some sort of connection that you can call into these people, but you want to make sure that you're focusing on that and talking about it within your brand and making it known so that they come to recognize you as the expert of that. This is, this next one is by far the most important thing that changed everything for me is when I figured out who my ideal client is. If you answer everyone, or no one, you're wrong. 
It's not enough to say anyone who needs what I'm selling. Oh, my ideal client, I get realtors to answer this on my questionnaire all the time. Anyone looking to buy or sell their home. Really? You've not had one nightmare client that you can't remember. That's like, oh my God, I would never want this person. How did they find me? Who recommended them to me? Because I'm going to make sure I don't take those recommendations anymore. There's been somebody that has been hung up on you. And then equally, you've had someone that you're like, I wish this person would buy a house every day. Mm -hmm. I wish this person could show up as, as my client every single time they were so effortless. They were so easy. We connected, we bonded, they trusted me. They didn't question every single thing. There is something about people that come to you that you really like this one here. I have a whole, I'm pretty sure I'm up to two solid pages now on my ideal client. I have made a whole backstory about them. It's going to be a really personal to you. It's the individual, again, that you wish that you could work with over and over. I want you to consider what their life is like completely outside of working with you. What do they do in their spare time? How old are they? Do they have a family? Are they first-time homeowners? Are they empty nesters? Are they grandparents looking to move down to Florida? This is going to help you to even niche down even more who you can start to call into because it's okay I am a, a female branding photographer for women-owned businesses. I know that that's what I want most. And I want to work with women who are bold, who are confident, who can come to me with a plan and collaborate. I can say that specifically about my client. And my girl is Stephanie, and I call her Steph. And that's my fake avatar of a client. When I market, when I am considering all my market research, when I'm making my ads, when I'm making posts, I'm not talking to everybody when I'm posting. I'm talking to Steph only because I know that everyone out there who is a Steph is going to relate to what I have to say. And those who don't, that's okay. There are so many other photographers out there that are going to be able to take care of the clients that I don't necessarily want to work with because I don't think that they align. People who are overly anxious, I don't like to work with that because I think it takes a lot of time to calm someone down. And ultimately they aren't happy with the end result because they don't like how they performed in a session. And it's really hard for me to come in. I can take someone who's a little bit, who has some nerves, but someone who's really uncomfortable. I know another photographer who will take so much more time than I will and calm that person down. I don't mind admitting that because I'm going to get the people who are excited, who are ready to work with me. So some people think too, if you niche down too much, won't you not have a lot more money? Won't people start going everywhere else? Like you're going to lose clients. It's a little scary at first when you do see that there is a little bit of a dip in inquiries that come in. However, once it's consistent, once people know who it is you are and who you want to work with, I'm telling you, it's going to come at you more and more and you're going to continue to get your stuff over and over as a client. So really here, homework for this, you should have at least a full page about your ideal client. And you start to weave them in. I'll show you a little bit later in these slides, but you're going to be able to weave them into your advertising so that you call out to them. So now does your audience even know who you are? You know, it's crazy. I had a headshot event for a realty team last week. And one of the women said she doesn't have an Instagram for her business. And I'm like, oh my God, that is free. It is free advertising. And there's so many people on Instagram. Why would you not do that? Like that's where everyone's hanging out. Why would you not hit it hard on all the free social media you possibly can? So everyone who's on Instagram doesn't even know this person exists. When you start to show up in all these areas, you have to get a little bit vulnerable. People want to cheer those on that they feel an emotional connection with over anything else. Make sure to show your face often. A branding session is going to help with that. And take your business hat off and get personal once in a while. You don't have to share your deepest, darkest secrets, but you need to let people in so that they continue to come back. If all you do is post, I have this house for sale. Like I have a client who's selling this house. And then the next one, okay, does any, you know, does anyone have this? I'm looking for this. If I'm not buying or selling a house, I'm probably going to unfollow you. It's boring. I don't want to just see that all that on my feed. I get that you're a realtor, but what else about you is going to keep me entertained and engaged with you so that I'm a follower. And when I do need to buy or sell a house, or I do know somebody who's in the market for a realtor, I'm going to be able to say, I have the perfect one for you. And you're going to love her. She knows all the best coffee spots. You're so obsessed with coffee. Like she's constantly touring around her downtown area and hitting up all the local hotspots. Like you're going to want to go with her. 
or, oh my God, you have so many pets. This girl is a dog lover. She knows all the best dog parks. She's going to help you find the houses that are fenced in. She's going to know what you need as a pet owner. Like that right there is just associating who you are and letting it bleed into your business. So again, you're going to get those ideal clients over and over the more you show up. And then what problem can you solve for that ideal client? So now you're looking at your page that you have of them, right? And you're going to start to look into like Steph for me, she's a small business owner. She owns a little boutique and she has a family. She still wants to feel sexy and beautiful. She wants to feel connected to all of her clients. She wants to be able to dress them up and make them feel special. So she tries to exude that herself, but she sometimes feels overwhelmed as a mother and she's not really sure where to start. She needs some confident boosting after her mom bod. So I know that I can solve all these problems for her that she has. I just know that going in. And that's, again, how I'm showing up in my marketing as well. So when you combine your expertise and your ideal client's needs, you now have the solution to their problem. And that's where you're going to hit everything in either a very direct or subtle way. Do you guys have any questions on this slide before I move on? Nope. No? Okay. Am I talking too fast? I'm a fast talker. <laughs> no, you're good. Okay. I'm going to take a little sip here. So this is how we show up authentically. You got to speak in your voice when you're typing captions, when you're making your marketing, don't try to sound smarter than you are, I guess is what I, what it's boiling down to. So fancy words are not going to make you more appealing, especially if you're using them in text and not everyday verbal language. So if you're writing something on your posts and then they show up to the first listing with you and you're not talking like that, that's going to feel really weird. It's going to feel inauthentic. They thought they knew who they were going to show up and, and be touring with. And now they're like, wait, I don't even feel like I know this person. You're the expert because of the skills that you've acquired. And they're coming to you for your reputation and the experience promised. They don't care if you sound like a Harvard grad. And then I said, if you are, then talk that way. You know, if you did graduate from Harvard, by all means, let's talk that way. But it also makes things easier for you day to day to show up authentically without having to think about changing yourself, without having to get up and get ready and put on that extra layer of pretend. You can just be who you are and speak as you are and know that these clients are coming to you because they like that about you. You need to be certain. Stop using phrases that doubt your expertise. You don't need to say, I feel I do this or I think that I do a really good job of doing this. Instead, start speaking really direct and sure of yourself and what you have to offer. This will not only solidify your position, but it's going to reinforce your image in your ideal client's eyes. Remember that you are treated how you ask to be treated and someone else out there is delivering the message confidently. So why not you? Balance your consistency and your growth. So <laughs> I know someone's going through this right now. You're ready to grow, right? So while you want to maintain your consistency and what it's like to work with you, it's really important to also level up. You want to keep reaching for that next level position yourself as the go-to expert. Don't forget to take your audience along for the ride with you. That was the biggest thing when I rebranded. I was really scared. What if they don't recognize my logo anymore? Or even when I changed my name, what if they don't realize that it's me? So instead of just one day going, hey, I've, I've totally changed. I hope you all follow along. It's really cool to say, hey, we're about to hit the next level. Come with us as we brand, as we rebrand ourselves. That way your audience knows who you are and can continue on with this. But if you're stuck on a decision and you're like between two things that you think, oh, these both would be perfect for ideal client, you can put a poll. Get your audience and following involved in the rebrand so they feel like they've been part of this change with you. Get them excited. Hey, I'm stuck between two logos. What would you guys vote on? What feels more like me? You want to celebrate your achievements and continue the education. Talk about it along the way. People love motivation and to see that they are going to someone who truly cares about bettering themselves and staying current. Any questions on that one? Nothing. Yeah. If you guys even want to chime in, we don't have too many people in the group. If somebody wants to just pop, pop in and ask something, don't be afraid to do that. Hey, oh. Hey girl. oh, look who's there. Who's this look lovely who's lady? <laughs> so keyword association, this is something that was a little bit newer for me in branding. And I actually found it from a, a book on branding and says that the energy of your business can be boiled down to one word that you're able to kind of play off of. It's the main thing that you want your clients to think of when they think of you and working with you. It can be a representation of you personally, 
something you do. It can be about them and how you make them feel or the expectation of the experience. So my keyword is bold. So many people kept saying, oh, the women look so bold in your imagery. Again, every picture that you've seen so far and will continue to see um, should be a realtor or somebody in the field and or like in the industry. And it's a picture taken from me and one that I thought represented that boldness. And that's just because that's who I want to work with. I want people like Nicole who will lean up against your sexy and have fun with it, right? I don't want someone who's going to go, oh, that feels so funny, or I don't know, or I look weird. I don't want to deal with that. I want a woman who shows up super confident. So I use the word bold over and over, and I'll call that out, looking for bold women who are ready to level up their branding game. Why would I not want to do that? Why would I say, hey, everyone who's shy, come see me? That's not what I'm looking for <laughs> right now in a client. So you want to like call them off. Another really good example Um I know someone who does like Botox, she's an injector and she has red hair and she calls herself the redhead injector. Like that is just a key word. I think that's so brilliant of her. What great, great branding and marketing right there, because I think of her all the time. I think that's such a fun play on words. There's also another photographer who is, I think, called the tattooed photographer, something, something that has to do with that. And it's just, it's neat that they took something about themselves and just made it the whole thing that's going to make you think of them. Where was this photo taken? In my studio. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just Gina, reminds me so much of where I took one. It almost looks identical, but yeah. Gina, yeah, I just opened up a studio in Mount Clemens. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Cool. It's been fun. A little scary of an investment, but we're here. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be worth it. Yeah, it will be. Yep. So now I like to ask at the end, now, who are you and what do you do? So once you went through that. We asked this when we first started and it probably was something basic if you didn't have a good grasp on it. So now that you've gone through and kind of seen how you can pull, once you start to work on those things, you can now ask yourself again, okay, who am I and what do I do? What do I really do for my clients? I don't just buy and sell houses. I do this whole laundry list of things. And what can I pinpoint on there and really hit? Where is my ideal client struggling the most? And it's amazing because now you're taking yourself in a really oversaturated market and you're suddenly realizing, you know, oh, maybe you don't want to work with first time homeowners so much. Okay, well, that now narrows things down even more. Now your competition is even smaller because there are a ton of people who want to work with that. Again, maybe you're looking for like empty nesters. Their kids have all gone off to college and they're ready to downsize. Maybe that's something you can relate to. Maybe it's something where you haven't even done that. You might be younger and you're like, wow, I just did it a couple of times for these people. And I seem to have something. I seem to be able to connect to them really well. And so that's now where you start to hit your marketing more and more. It doesn't mean that you're not going to get first time homeowners. Don't be scared to niche down. You're definitely still going to get a lot of random people in there. Trust me, (laughs) no matter how many times I do it, I'll still every now and then get a client. And I'm like, huh. I wonder how they found me or how they thought that they'd be a great fit. And you just do it. That's okay. That's where you just keep the lights on, right? Those are the ones that just keep the bills going. But you're going to be able to narrow it down even more so that you can feel really excited about who you work with. And it's going to, again, reinforce that confidence in yourself and in your abilities. And you're going to be able to show up even more because you know, I've got this. I can solve this problem for them so confidently. And that's who I am and what I do. So what you do isn't unique, but how you do it is because only you can connect the way that you can competition can try, but no one else is going to give the exact same experience. When you focus on that, you're going to suddenly be in a lane, all of your own, even in the saturated market. This is your personal brand. Before you go into branding your business, you have to brand yourself in a small business. It just is what it is that you, you have to now is so different from 20 years ago. So those people I hear older realtors, Oh, I've been in the game for so long. I didn't have to do all this. I don't want to learn all this social media stuff. Well, the younger ones are, and that's where everyone's hanging out. And this is the change. Like Nicole said, you have to be able to adapt. You have to be able to evolve with everything. You have to learn it. I have to learn how to present on a canvas screen within zoom. I just have to do it if I want to keep up with everybody. And the more that you can, get your personal brand in there, it starts to leak into the business, especially when you're the one in charge of it. I've, I've not met too many realtors that have said to me, my company, you know, my company won't let me brand myself. I have to use these colors. That's got to suck because then it's like, you're trying to fit your brand within this larger company. What is it? 
I don't know. I, I'm not going to know them all, all the names, but there's someone whose colors are red, white, and blue. Is it Remax? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And That's so immediately I, what I thought of when you said that. Yeah. See, and it's yourself. like, yeah. I've heard a couple of people they are like, well, my team's letting me do a little bit, but I had someone who was like, I have to use these colors. And she was so disappointed. And I'm like, why did you pick them then to partner with? You should have tried going somewhere else. If they're going to hold back your personal brand and they're only caring about th their name, that should tell you a lot about the company. I'm just saying. You got to go with someone who's going to be able to have something that you can go into and make it your own because you're the one going out and doing the work for it. And you're the, it's your money that's going to be affected by it. So the more, again, that you can develop this personal brand, it's going to leak through. And the most important part too, is you have to follow through with it. You have to actually do what you say you're going to do. You have to follow through on your promises and deliver a consistent experience from client to client. So if you gave one a bottle of wine, a little box of cookies and this, and then you didn't do it for the next one, and that person may have recommended, or maybe they saw a post, they're going to be like, what the hell? Where's my wine and cookies? Like, if that's your little signature thing, you have to be consistent with it. You have to at least give your little gifts. You have to make it so that it they know what to expect again, going through it with you. And this is going to build your reputation and manage expectations. When working with you further, it's going to be reinforcing that you're known for something, make you stand out in your industry as a leading expert guru of XYZ. The realtor that helped me find my house, she is a friend of mine. I obviously have a lot of friends, a lot of clients who are realtors. It was really hard to choose somebody to work with when it came time to buy or sell my house. And ultimately, I picked it because she was the one that I was the most comfortable with. And I'll never forget one day it's, we bought in 2021. So you guys know how competitive that was. There was like one house going up a month. So everyone is going to it. And I'll never forget one of them. She was actually on her way up North with her family, or they were going to a beach or something. And they were all dressed in bathing suits and a house popped up and me and my husband were like, oh my God, we've got to go see this. We didn't get that one. So I do feel bad about the story, but she was literally on her way to the beach and she was in her bathing suit and she goes, we're turning around. We're about 10 minutes away. I'll show you really quick. And then we're going to go to our family day. So she turned around and I just knew she was that kind of person. I knew that she, if she was able to make anything happen, she was going to, and she showed up in her bathing suit, her kids running around the house while we were looking. I don't care. I just wanted my ass in that house. She could have come in a bathrobe. I don't care what she looked like on there. And that should be a lesson for you to realize too, the level of professionalism is more on the experience than it is on what you look like. It's what you're going to do for them more than what you look like. People come into these branding shoots from every field, every industry. And it's fun when we bring it out a little bit, but sometimes they'll come in just a black blazer and that's it. And it's like, yeah, we can have fun with that and do that. But why did you wear that? Especially men, suit and tie. And I go, wow, you know, that's okay. And that's like the only outfit that they bring because they think in their head, well, this looks professional, doesn't it? Yeah, it definitely looks polished for sure. You look polished and professional, but is this you all the time? Is this what I should expect all the time when you show up? And are you shooting yourself in the foot by dressing up all the time, overly dressing for branding shoots or just how you decide to show up? Because then they're going to expect that. And if you show up in jeans and a t-shirt one day, they're gonna be like, whoa, you know, or maybe they'll like that more, but you don't have to put that pressure on yourself. As long as you are again, showing up authentically, you can pretty much do whatever you want to do. If you're going to have the really good experience of working with you. So let's get into the actual visuals of things. This is a little visual braining kit, the imagery and its quality. So the quality of how you represent yourself will be the quality your customer or clients assumes is awaiting them. It needs to be attractive. Keeping things fresh, polished, and full of emotion will appeal to your ideal client. They should be proud to share that they're doing business with you. That is so important. If they're going to send their friends and family to your website right now or to your Instagram, to your Facebook page, what are the friends and family going to see? Even just take a quick scroll through your Instagram. What are the top things that they're going to see on there or your Facebook or whatever it is that you would have your clients send? Is it something you're proud of and you think that that person would be proud to show that they are working with you? Your personality and how you connect. Again, how you speak matters. You should be connecting with your client as much as possible to humanize the message. The more you can tap into real emotion and stay true to your story values and deliver a consistent, hmm, I made a little error there, but just consistent energy, the more connected that they're going to feel. 
Ah, got it. Your story and your values. So what you truly believe in, what you stand for, things like that. And now colors and fonts. These are really big. I have one of my best friends and she will not give up this really scribbly cursive. And I keep telling her it's so illegible. Nobody can read that. It's really difficult to read. Be careful with it. I get that sometimes you're like, well, this font really captures my personality. That's great. But can we read it? You have to make things easy to read. You have like two seconds online to capture someone's attention, especially if it's really important information. If it's like an event that you're throwing or, you know, a seminar or something like this presentation, if the font was really hard to read, people are just going to keep breezing right by it. Same with the colors. You want to make sure that, and you'll see this next slide is like so embarrassing. My first one, you want to make sure that the colors complement each other. I would recommend, and I didn't thread it through a lot of this. I'll go back to this one. My rebrand, she just did black cream and this like deep burnt orange for me. And so I've like trickled that out here, you know, throughout here and there of the presentation so that you kind of saw it, but this is more of an accent color. If I were to make a whole slide this color, it's going to be like, whoa, like really hard on the eyes. So it's okay if you guys have color in there, but I would choose to integrate it in more of an accent color than I would something really harsh on the eyes. You want to make sure that it's pleasant to read. And then you need to remember too, that colors evoke emotion. For example, red is really bold and energetic. It also can represent anger and hate and things like that. So be careful with reds. Um, it's a fun pop that does feel loud though. If it's toned down, like that orange is in the right way and blue is going to get off more of like a calming presence of relaxation. I'm sure you guys are well-versed in this going into so many <laughs> homes and seeing so many colors on walls. And it really gives you like a feel. My living room is black. I have the windows to carry it. Don't worry. And it just gives off this like really luxurious feel into it. But when we first moved in, it's crazy when we pull up pictures, it was like this really soft pea green and her decor in here was really like that modern farmhouse kind of thing. And it's funny how these little symbols of things can really put you in a different mindset. And so that has to do with your branding too. Your ideal client should be really attracted to the colors and the fonts that you're using. So this scary was my first presentation, you guys. It's so clashing. There are so many different big colors. Like I said, here's that orange, just way too big. I use these like funny fonts that I thought would be good. This just random color black. There's really no cohesiveness to this. And you want to know why? Because this was self-made. This was not a Canva template. This was me, a not graphic designer person trying to come on and do too much. That's why I asked if you guys knew Canva. When it comes to your branding, hand it over to an expert. If you can't do this yourself, if you're not excited by graphic design and by building a visual brand, a great investment is to go ahead and hand it over to a, a branding expert. I think even, I will say this, even more than branding photography, even before you do branding photography, you should be handing your money to a branding expert so that they can get a handle of things for you and give you kind of like a guide of how you should be using certain colors, fonts, tones. They really help take everything that you're looking for and just put it into a visual. There are also people, if you don't like doing the social media aspect, who will take over your whole social media for you. And then it's a no-brainer. You just hand them the photos as they come. So this is how things all fit together as well. So you first are going to start with the branding. And this is all about you. It's your essence, the heart of your position, not only within your business, but in life. It's who you are and what you want to be. That's now going to fall into the arc of your marketing. You're going to take that knowledge of your brand into your marketing. And this is customer focused. So this is your brand's accountability. This is your research to ensure that you're correctly communicating your personal brand with the business and any area that your clients can see you in. It's kind of the thought behind the brand. And then your advertising kicks in. And this is your presence. It maintains a brand's and business's visibility. This is where you're going to drive home again and again what you are the expert of in your field. This is more of the tangible versus the concept in the marketing that you're going to use on social media, TV, radio, any forms that you use to reach out. Your advertising is the conversation. <clears throat> So now when it comes to branding photo shoots, here's my advice for you. I would say book quarterly. We live in the great state of Michigan where you have all the seasons here to remind us where we're moving into the quarters. I believe that they should be quarterly. 
too much changes, as we touched on in the beginning there, too much changes from a few months of growth that you have, of evolution that you have, and you want to be taking your clients along for the ride and keeping things fresh and exciting. It gives off just a level of professionalism that a lot of other things just don't do especially with cell phone photos and things like that. There's just something about somebody who can continuously book these. It gives you that that just different level. You're successful. That's what this portrays when you can keep up with things. And people are attracted to obviously to success. You want to plan these at, week, at least two and a half weeks in advance. I say this for my clients because there is prop gathering to be had. There are things that you're going to have to do. Nicole, I'm going to call you out because you gave the example earlier. We had this great idea or she had this idea, but we talked about um, very trendy to have those newspapers, right? Like where you see your name, you can make them in Canva and then you go print them at FedEx and it looks like a newspaper and you can bring it in. Nicole did not do it. <laughs> she did not bring it. But it's like, if you have, it's okay because that was just one prop, but if you've built a whole concept, if you and your photographer have sat down, I do video chats, and if we come up with a whole concept, we're going to do this, 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 and then the day of they go, oh, I didn't bring my props. Well, now what are we doing? We had a whole plan in place for this hour and a half or two hours that we're together, and now you didn't bring any of that stuff. And sometimes it's because they feel too rushed or they wait until the last second to do all these things. So I say plan at least two and a half weeks. I like to have my clients do three to four, to be honest, in advance so that you have time to go through your closet. I mean, you're busy. You're a business owner. This is a big deal. This is a big investment. You want to give yourself time to go through all of it. You want to bring relating props, relating props to not only the business, but to who you are as a person. This is the time too to experiment with your look and brand. It's really fun to bring like just a really fun outfit to it that you're like, oh, this has been in my closet. Excuse me, I pick up for a while. And it's just, I haven't worn this or I bought this as, you know, I was going to go to this fun party or this event and I wore this dress once. I felt so good in it or this suit once and then I never put it on again. So why not bring it out in your branding shoot and have fun with that? I tell my clients, bring as many looks as you want and we don't have to stay in them in equal times. So whether you're, if you end up working with me or working with somebody else with branding photography, you can say, I brought this outfit. I just want like one or two fun pictures in it. I just really feel good in there. Why not experiment? And if you end up liking all the photos from that, you might say to yourself, wow, maybe I need to start showing up more in these kind of clothes. I felt good. And this was, this was exciting for me. You want to connect authentically. That's so generic of a thing to say. I'm going to rephrase that there. Instead of connecting authentically, I want to say you need to bring the attitude required of the session. So that's why I don't always like to work with people who are overly anxious about being at a photo shoot. Sometimes I, I look at them and I think, why did you book this? You're so uncomfortable. I get that you need the photos, but if you're not ready to take them and you can't convey the expression required, if you can't do this, if you can't be smiley and throw confetti and look like you're having fun and it just sort of looks like, uh, and you're unsure, that's how I can't pose that. No photographer can pose comfort and expression. That is up to the client to continue. I can put you in a situation all day long. I can bend your arms, this and that, but I can't make your face do what your face needs to do. <laughs> and I can't make you have that attitude. There are times where maybe you want it to be a little bit more serious and bold and times when you want to be laughing out loud and having fun. You have to be able to come in and be comfortable with your photographer and just hit that over and over and over. You have to go in and know I'm working right now. This shoot, I'm on the clock for my business right now. So I need to show up and just do it. Um, indulge your experience. Go get your makeup done. Get your hair done. A lot of my clients book their hair appointments. Like they'll book a photo shoot with me and then they immediately book a hair appointment like two days before. So they feel good and they feel fresh. If you want to treat yourself to a new outfit, that's great. But you definitely want to indulge in the experience. And then celebrate milestones in this, like use this as an opportunity to look ahead in your calendar and see what you have coming up. And you could start saying, okay, I need some ad, um, some stuff for an ad that I'm going to have for an event that's coming up, or I know that I'm going to hit this milestone or someone leaked to me that I'm getting this award. Like, can I do a photo shoot and bring those sort of things along so that you have a photo ready to celebrate? This is really good and important for holidays as well. If you know certain holidays are coming up, um, I've had people in December bring Valentine's Day props. So they're like, I'm just ready to go. 
You want to be able to think ahead and look in your calendar and grab those things. And then you want to try to post yourself on Instagram specifically every like eight squares. They, you want to be able, if your audience does like just a tiny scroll, they at least see you a couple times on there. Ways to use the images. You can tell that I slapped this one together right before our presentation. <laughs> you can use them for social media posts collaboration promo. So Nicole asked me, I need a photo of you for this presentation. And I have a collection of fun photos of me ready to go because I do my branding. Facebook profile, Instagram profile, LinkedIn profile, different marketing materials, a website refresh. I can't tell you how many times I've gone on someone's website and it's the same website it was six months ago. That is so boring. Why would anyone come again? If they've been to your website once and you're not updating it, why do they ever need to go to it again? You want people, you want to be driving traffic in there with new and exciting copy and images, your email signature, your business cards, banner on post. Nicole, I love that you do this. And I've seen a couple others in your industry do it as well. And I feel like you almost started this trend, at least for my followers, like who I follow. Um, but you'll put a little banner with your logo, your name, and then your picture is like in the center. I love that. I love that. I see you and all of that. That's really, it keeps it cohesive. And again, if I'm seeing, if I follow a bunch of my clients who are realtors or friends and family are following, you know, a bunch of, bunch of different realtors on there, uh, it really like helps her post stand out to me. I know it right away. I see that little banner and I know that it's a Nicole post. So I pay a little bit more attention to it. Remind them often who it is behind the business. Come out and say hi. Encourage a following that turns into a community that then turns into effortless sales and connections. There are so many women who follow and who are actively engaging with me on my Instagram who have never worked with me before. And I love that. I love that I have a little community around my company. So when they're ready, I know that they're going to come to me. We're establishing that trust. They're building things up. It might not be the right time for them to book right now. That's okay. But I have a pretty active community and nothing has been better for my business than doing that. So session tip number one, you want to brand yourself before the shoot. You should have not only your personal brand established, but also what that's going to look like within the business and what the goal is for this particular session. Going in without a plan is a misuse of your investment in time, money, and energy. It's throwing something together and hoping it fits versus taking the proper steps to make sure that it fits and will be a good use of advertising. So you want to always be attracting the ideal client. You want to give life to the brand, use some vision boards, and zero in on a specific goal for that session. Posing an expression might just be the most important part of an image. It shows you relaxed into the state that you claim that you're in. As you probably don't have a modeling background, this is going to require you to practice at home in your session outfits in order to understand how you look and what you need to do to achieve the desired outcome. While your photographer is there to guide you, it's like bending a Barbie doll. If you can't take the energy the rest of the way, it's going to look nothing more than stiff and awkward. You want to express real emotion, got to move, be prepared, and focus on variety here. Big on the session outfit posing. Sit down, ladies, in your outfits. There is a difference with those darn trousers from sitting and standing. Just a huge difference in them. Oh, don't I know. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of lessons learned. I have had one person come with three outfits that she couldn't sit in. Do you know how much variety we got in that session? How many things you, you can do just standing up when she brought me a laptop, a cell phone, and three outfits that she couldn't sit down in? It was lacking huge variety. It makes my job more difficult. And ultimately, when you view your gallery, you're going to just feel like I could have copy pasted you in all those different settings. You want to be able to move freely. So a variety of outfits is really, really helpful. And it's okay to also think, Again, like pulling in the personal brand, if you're, if let's say fitness is really important to you. So bring an outfit that has to do with fitness. It doesn't have to all be, hi, I'm a realtor. Hi, I'm a realtor. We'll get it. We'll get it from the copy. We'll get it from the other. Um, oh, that's interesting. Wow. What was that? <laughs> a screen, right? That was so weird. Does that all make sense? Everyone? Does anyone have any questions about that? No. Okay, good. So session tip number three, 
free yourself of fears of judgment, feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt. Show up as you need because you are so sure of your story, message, and purpose. Confidence and boldness are key. That doesn't mean always in your face as much as it means self-assured. Trust me, this shows up on camera. It's very easy to tell when somebody was stiff and uncomfortable in a session, which means they didn't feel like they were being very authentic. I think it's half nerves of, of a photo shoot and a camera in your face and half they're really unsure of who they are in the session. I truly don't believe that it's all just, oh, I really don't like my picture being taken. It's because they are unsure of what they are supposed to be doing, which means they're not very clear in their business. I have found specifically with me, the I have changed things up so that I can get you more comfortable with working with me and having a camera in your face faster by doing a Zoom chat before, especially if you're a first time client with me, I break the ice and we do like a 45 minute to an hour Zoom chat so that you really get to know me. And I talk just like this. I'm very personable in it. I try to just be myself so that when they show up on set, they know who they're working with already and they can just relax and let those fears go. Because I need them to start showing up. I need them to give this badass attitude like Nikki did here. This was our first session together that I did. And I love how she was willing to just go there. It's so funny too. At the, at the end, I want to say like the last half hour of every session I do is when my subject really comes alive because they're so, they're just in it. And this was at the very end of our session is when she really gave that. This photo is amazing. <laughs> Thanks. I love it. She looks badass. She took, yeah, I, know. She does. I like, I didn't realize for a while that her shirt had the black line. I thought she was wearing like a loose tie. And I was like, oh, I kind of love that idea. <laughs> okay, next idea for your session. I'm about a little loose tie for sure. A little skinny tie. So Nicole asked me ahead of time here. She's like, Do, if you can share any trends that are going on in branding sessions right now. And she brought up the newspaper one, which definitely is a huge, huge trend. But this one that I've noticed more than anything, I used to take um, pictures up against backgrounds. I still do. I see pictures up against backgrounds and people wanted me to cut them out so that it looked like they were in that like floating white box or colored box, whatever it was. The real trend now is this on set. People are wanting things that show I'm on a photo shoot set. They don't want to always be cut out anymore of things. In mm -hmm. fact, I have so many people showing up and going, Hey, I make sure we get some with the, the stuff in the background. I'm like, Oh, my thousands of dollars of equipment. Sure. We'll make sure that that makes it. <laughs> That's but it's yourself. fun, right? But it's fun. I, I love, Nicole, I love this picture of you. And there were a couple more that I even included in your thing that you didn't pick because they were just so awesome. I loved this. I love that we didn't cut you out and we can tell that you're onto something. This looks so right away. I'm like, what is she doing? What was she on a photo shoot for? <laughs> you want to know about this picture. And it has nothing to do right now with her being a realtor. I just want to know about her. Suddenly I'm clicking through a page. Oh, she's a real estate agent. Oh, look at this house she sold. This grabbed me in. Again, if you're only posting houses and I'm not in the market to buy or sell a house, I'm not interested in following you. I don't want to just see that. That does not pertain to me. But now when I'm following this fun stuff and I'm checking her out and I'm looking to who Nicole is as a person, when it's time for me to do that, I know who I want to go to. Like it's, it's fun. I see this person, I'm connected to her. So these are some key takeaways again, to really drive home. I want you to be authentic and find your niche within this market. Be honest with who you are and use your strong suits to discover how you can brand yourself in a special way all your own. Your ideal clients, you need to be marketing, marketing for them. There's no point in trying to attract everyone because you won't. But you can be focused on those who will bring you the most joy to work with. Build upon your ideal client as much as possible. No detail is too small and allow them to grow as you grow. So the same ideal client that I had in the beginning, stuff has just grown. Because I, I don't want to continue to get people who are always just starting out. I still do that, but I'm ready in my, my career to level up with my clients. Now that I've been in this industry a little bit longer, I find that I enjoy people who've been in their industry a little bit longer. So I allowed my ideal client to evolve with me. And so now I'm thinking she has a different mindset than she did as a first-time business owner. So it depends again on your ideal client. So if you're like, you know, when I was first starting out, it was fun to get these first time homeowners because we kind of were learning together. But now that I've been in this, I kind of know that I want people who are looking for, you know, $2 million homes and that they're not first time homeowners. They're really, 
they've, they've had a career change. They've moved from somewhere else. I want to work with them. Then your ideal client has to have had that so that you can start to develop and market around that person again. You're not going to use the same language. You're not going to use the same copy when you're talking to them or the same ads. Curate the image and be visually pleasing. Ensure that your image matches your energy. Take the care to align every aspect of your brain and business. This is how the world sees you and interprets your message. It all truly matters and can make all the difference in who you attract on paper. And don't wait, just show up now. So we talked about this in the beginning too. Like there, you're going to have to um, kiss a lot of bad branding frogs, so to speak, before you find your Prince Charming out there. Like there's going to be some mistakes that you're going to make. You're going to try things that you think are cool. My God, you're going to try so many things that you see your competition doing. And I just want for everybody to be like, oh, I don't need to worry about what they're, what they're doing. I started branding myself and my photography, kind of how I did in my family photography, which is what I saw everyone else doing. Very cursive very flowy, very soft with my ads. And then I told my um, branding expert, I go, okay, I want you to brand me. And you know how people always do like cream with black? I want to do black with cream. And she got the message. Like, I want it a little bit edgy. I want to elevate it a little bit. Too many photographers are taking really the soft, filmy look of everything. It's very, um, just very light. And I want to show up and I want to be the bold one. And that there's a difference in there. But it, I started as the other one. And it wasn't until, again, I kind of was like, oh, like, things still don't feel right. I need to tweak. And that's okay. It's good to sometimes get in it to see what's working and what isn't working. So just allow yourself to begin. Personal branding will allow you to start showing up as the person that you truly want to be until one day it's just who you are and it's effortless and it's making you money and giving you the life that you've always wanted. The doors that open and relationships around you will be so in line that it won't even feel like work, but a natural extension of just yourself. Take the notes that you took here and really begin to map out your brand on paper. Happy branding. <laughs> that was our fun shoot. Nicole asked for this shot specifically, and I love it. I was, we had to keep, we did it like three or four times to get it just right, but it's perfect. I love it. When you do action shots, there's like a hundred photos taken and like maybe five of them turn out good. <laughs> no, it just happens like that. Does anyone have any questions? I know I, I kind of took up more time than I wanted to, but I'm still here. If you guys are still willing to hang out, um, I told Nicole, if we want to have just a casual chat about, you know, any questions that you guys have, I'm more than willing. Again, I'm not the branding expert. I handed my brand over to somebody, but I have seen what works and what doesn't work. And if you have any photography questions specifically, I'm here to answer those. So who do you have as a branding consultant? Ooh, that was a question I was wondering. So I have a couple that I'll recommend, but the one that I'm working with specifically, her name, her Instagram name is The Branding Addicts. And I can send Nicole this information too, so that um, if she wants to pop it in like a chat at the end or on a post so that we have all the, like the notes. <clears throat> and then the other one is, she's an acronym and I always flip it around. L M T design company. Do you get a kickback from anybody who goes to these people? <laughs> no, just I say do not. Baby sent you. Yeah, you can just say that. That'd be nice. But nope, I do not get a kickback for this. These are just people that I see and that I would trust with my brand. And I obviously trusted one of them. Um, both of them do a little bit. I think they specialize in more of like an elevation of branding. It looks very refined. Um, they definitely both can do like bold, loud, fun things as well, but that's what you're going to see the most of on their page is like that really refined look. And again, I just think it it's for me, it's what I want my clients to be seeing. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it's important that we have a well, one, so obviously I've done a lot of your branding sessions with you. Um, I'm going to stop your share real quick here. Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's super important to have branding photos. I mean, I've done several sessions with you. Um, with with my business changes, you know, we we did the 
four of us and then it dwindled down to three of us and we redid branding again. Love that branding. That was probably my favorite. I do like the shoot we just did, but the one before studio, that, studio, yeah. Oh my God. I love that branding. And then, um, the last one we did, it just, it was cool that it was just me, you know, because yeah. it's been a while since we just did ours, but you did all the branding for modern agent blueprint of Nikki and I, and I think those pictures are phenomenal. I think they came out oh, so yeah. good. Um, and Nikki couldn't be on today. She had a women council of realtor event. She's the president. So she kind of had to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I, I love all the stuff that we do. And I think I love that you are kind of open to whatever, or, you know, mid session, you're like, Ooh, I like that. Do that again. Like, yeah. oh, that. <laughs> like, you know, you have that eye where, you know, like you have, you just come up with all these cool ideas and sitting different ways and doing all that. And I love that we could incorporate like having the phone catch the back, you know, the background of the videos and all that stuff. I love that. Um, I just, I love having the option to do this. And I know um, for local people, it's great, but find, how would you suggest for people who are not local, who, you know, how can they find a branding photographer like you? Is there a, a good way? I mean, is it just more like conversation and see, kind of get their vibe? I mean, you can get a vibe from their photos, but what if they're looking for something very specific? Like I, we haven't done this so much. We, you did a little bit in this last session, but more of like, like the flat, the, you know, flat spreads of things and all that. Is that, yeah. do you have a recommendation for, you know, do, are you one of those people who are like, I don't like those. I do like those. Or is it something like you have to look for specifically in people who can see that vision? I don't even know what kind of question I'm asking right now. No, no, I get you. I would say the most important thing is find a bunch of them. So you should be able to type in the city and then type in brand photographer on Instagram in your search, as well as websites. You should be hitting websites, Pinterest, and Instagram, and just typing in the city and photographer and take a look follow a few different ones, go through their stuff and, and really look at what they are capturing. I think that I do a really good job fitting every, every client that I have and getting like, like you said, their brand, their aesthetic. However, every photographer has a style. There yeah. is still like a style behind it. And so um, even people who are competition with me in the area, I, or who I used to consider that I've had so many people say they're not your competition because they're not doing what you do. You don't do what they do. And it's amazing. Cause again, we both are pushing a button on a camera, but there's something different about their aesthetic, the way they edit, um, the way they pose people and what they capture and what they choose to show online that they do versus what I'm showing online that I do on my aesthetic and the way I edit and stuff. So it's important. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but every, all of mine, I like really deep blacks, punchy colors. I like it really like, again, bold. That's the word that I like associated with me. So that is leaking in every single thing. There are other photographers who are more, it's called film. It's filmy. It's soft. It almost looks like it could be family photography, but it's the person. Everything's very warm. I don't edit like that. So if you're looking for that, that you'll notice on my Instagram, oh, that's not what she does. So we might not be a good fit for each other. Yeah. So I think it's important for you to find and then see if you can't find, they should be showing up and talking, whether it's in their stories, whether it's, you know, read the copy they have on their website. How are they writing things? How do they sound? What's their tone? Do you think you're going to get along with that person? Because ultimately that's what you should look for in a photographer above all, because little tweaks can be made. I can warm up some images. I can do little things here and there to help get you in more aligned of what you're looking for. But if you're not comfortable with me, or if you look at something on my page and you're like, Ooh, I don't think I can do that. That doesn't look like anything that I'd want to do. Then you should not book with me. You should find somebody aligned with who, you know, you're going to be comfortable with because that's where the expression is going to come into play. That's where like your authenticity is going to be able to shine because you feel really comfortable around that photographer, especially if you've never worked with them before. And I'll tell people too, if they had fun in my session or even at the end, if they're like, oh, I still, I'm not sure the second, the third, the 10th, I've had somebody who's been with me 17 times. I think she's 15 or 17 times every session moving on. Cause you're not going to show up with those jitters anymore. So you have to like, think to yourself too. Um, I've had some people like, oh, I hated my first photographer. I'm looking to book, book with you. And I'll be like, oh, what didn't you like about the experience? Just so I know, let me make sure that I'm going to be a good fit. And a lot of times it was their insecurity and the photographer can't fix that for you. Yeah. 
you know, so it's important. I think I, Nicole, can you speak on this with working with me our first time versus this last time? Like how different do you feel with me even? Well, I mean, I think it's different. I mean, I've done photo shoots with different people and I've done, I've done it with, um, men and women photographers. And I feel like sometimes you feel very rushed, like, you know, and, and it's like, okay, this, then this, then this, then this, then this. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I don't even know that I felt comfortable in that pose before we're moving on to the next one. So I think it's, it is in kind of an evolution one, once I have gotten more comfortable with knowing a little bit more how to pose or what side I like better. I did realize something though, Jamie, one thing I figured out, I always lean on my right side. I have nothing yeah. leaning left and we have to fix that <laughs> next time. Okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, obviously I'm more comfortable leaning to the right or turning more to the right. So it's just things that you kind of figure out as you go. So then we can yeah. kind of critique that a little bit and change yeah. things up and switch positions. And that's why posing in the mirror is so important to see like, wow, this is what I do. If I had to hit a couple, I have Pinterest board. I think Pinterest is a great tool for men and women. I have men's boards on my Pinterest as well. So they can see different pose inspiration. Those who look at those Pinterest boards and find a couple poses that they think, oh, I, I, I want to do that. They are the clients who are always, I don't care how nervous they were, they will be well off than somebody who didn't look at the board and didn't choose a couple. It right. helps your photographer to have a jump off point. I need to see what you're willing to do. So if you just show up, I'll have, oh, I can't tell you how many times, I wish that this sentence couldn't even be strung together. Tell me what to do. That's every single client comes up. Tell me what to do. Just put me where you need me. I'm like, what do you mean tell you what to do? pose, you know, like, here's what you do. I can put you in poses, but the tell me what to do tells me that you're not sure what you want from the session at all. You should be able to say, okay, um, I have a couple of these poses that I want to try to get into. Here's what I have here. Here are my outfits. And then we start, I'll say, okay, let's start with this. But it shows me if they're all conservative poses and they're not really outgoing and wild and laughing. And you told me, go ahead and put me where you want me. I'm going to make you do what I want my clients to do. So yeah. if that's not you and that's uncomfortable and you're like, wait, 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 here was all my inspiration. I go, oh, it's very toned down. It's very reserved. It's very quiet. Okay, but you you didn't tell me that. You have to be able to communicate what it is that you're wanting out of it. And the only other way to really do it is inspiration photos is to say, this is kind of like the feel that I want. So again, I do a Zoom personally. I do a Zoom chat with all my clients. And we go over it and we build a Pinterest board together. That way I can say, oh, what do you think of this outfit? And they're like, no, I'd never wear that. And it gives me an idea of who you are because we just met. I'm not going to know you. I'm not going to know your personality right out the gate perfectly. You know, it's, we only can learn about each other within an hour. So it's really difficult for me. And I'm working with so many different clients juggling it. I, I make a Pinterest board for everybody. If anything, just for the whole vibe of the session of what you're looking for, that also can change ses session to session. Like you could say, okay, this one, I want to be a little bit more reserved, or I want a mixture of this, or I'm specifically shooting for this event that I have. And this is how I want the images to look. This is how I want to be represented. Like there has to be more thought to it than just, I'm just getting branding photos done. Yeah. You know, there's got to be some thought behind it. Well, I think it's great. And so for those of you, you know, people who are part of like coffees and contracts and stuff like that, they have like monthly brand photo ideas that kind of go along with their content, but you can take a lot of those ideas and reuse them for other things, obviously. But I think it's always great to have a few things that show your personality or show whatever, um, you know, like bringing like something like a little coffee mug that says Ann Arbor or something yeah. like that, that can, or confetti, <laughs> that yeah. can, you know, can do something fun with. I think that those are fun things. Like we did the champagne popping mm -hmm. um, outside of studio, studio in Ann Arbor. And that was so fun. To yeah. be able to do, you know, like just thinking about how do we want to use this time? Because there, there's also plenty of times where I'm like, shoot, we should have done this like afterwards. So if you kind of write out what you want from the session, that keeps like, me in business, <laughs> yeah, right? Think about what you want to do because like, I mean, I told Jamie, I was like, I couldn't get these stupid newspaper things done in time. And then I was like, man, I wonder what she'd charge me to like, come back out and do like a handful of photos again. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, we could do a whole nother brand shoot. I, I could do this all day. Um, the hardest part is finding clothes. Um, yeah. But, you know, I love, I love what you do. And I love being able to 
um, capture all that. And I, like I was saying, like, you know, with certain photographers, I felt like I was very rushed. I did one, the photographer who, well, I'm not going to use the example of why, cause it will pop up and I don't want her to see this, but <laughs> I was put in, like, she had me sitting in very odd positions or like, she had me lay on a couch and I, I knew I was like double chinned up. And I was like, this is awful. Like, I know I look horrible in this position. Why are we even doing this? You know, and I know that yeah. we've gotten, like, we've sat me in certain positions and we're like, oh, no, 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 that's not a good yeah. one. Let's not, let's not do that. Well, I, sh I show the back of the camera. I think it's a big red flag if your photographer is like, no, I don't show the back of the camera. That's that's a red flag. You need to know how you look. It's basically the mirror. If you don't have a mirror in front of you, you have to see. <laughs> And it's important. I think a lot of photographers are nervous because really just expectations. When you look on the back of the camera, you have to remember that you have not been edited at all yet. So I think a lot of them don't show because they're nervous for you to see what the image looks like before they've touched it up. Um, and at first I kind of felt like that, but I'm like, I don't care. I really want them to see what they look like. And a lot of times if you're doing something I don't want you to do, I'll say, why don't we take a look through these? Because I want you to be like, oh, I don't like that. Because I, I don't want to be negative in sessions. So if someone comes and says, can you tell me if I'm like doing this thing and I get like a double chin? I'm like, I go, no, I'm just going to move you in a way that you don't have it. But if I tell you, Hey, you're doing that thing. All you're going to think about is, am I doing the thing? Am I doing the thing? Yeah. And you're not going to get lost in the moment. So I won't do that. I will not tell people when they're doing something because first of all, you're beautiful. And it's my job to make sure that you don't have any sort of thing that I would be like, she hates this but I don't want it to be a negative experience. Instead, I call out for more of what I want to see and I show you the back of the camera. And then I have my clients choose their photos and that has been a game changer for me. Um, when I used to just give them, I would say, and I have other photographers that are like, oh, I won't make you just select only 50 of your images. I'll let you get all 150. I guarantee you, first of all, they're gonna charge you way more for that, right? Like you're getting more product, you're gonna pay more for it. I bet you don't use more than 50 of those photos you get back. Right. Getting all of your photos from a session is really not a flex. It's not, you're not going to use all of them. I would rather that you select the ones that you're going to, you know, hundred percent you're going to use. So I can give those a more dedicated edit and dedicated time. And I can be more intentional in session with you. And I know hundred percent, these are going to be the ones that get used. Clients can pay for more. That also allows me to price myself a little bit lower than those who are giving you all the photos. Because yeah. now I'm only worried about this select few. And then like Nicole's experience, if you love more photos, of course, I'm going to let you buy extras. I have a sliding scale to make it more affordable. I work with people who continue to come to me over and over. If you're a longtime client, I'm going to give you a big discount on getting more photos. Like I want you to have what you want to keep, but why would I just say, oh, you're going to get all the photos. Come shoot with me. It's going to be $1,800 and you're going to get 200 images. You have everything you need for a year. All these should be red flags. Everything you need for a year in one session. Are you kidding me? There's no way in hell. And you're going to grow so much that you're not going to want the same photos that you had in January and December. Right. You're a totally different person. And you shouldn't. That looks very stale. It looks one note. It looks like, wow, this person, I've seen this image over and over. We get it. Like it's too redundant. You've got to keep people engaged and keep it fresh. Yeah. You know? And before I let you guys go, this is like the last thing I really wanted to hit on. Um, Cause I just think that it's, it's so important when you're planning a branding shoot, think first, like we said, you need to know what, what you want to do and have a plan, but you might be saying, well, no, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I swear <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> editing myself. I've caught myself so many times. Well, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what it is that I, I want to communicate out there. So you need to be thinking first in terms of captions. You need to be thinking of what it is that you want to be telling these people out there who are following you. And then you can start to curate and think how, what's a fun way that I can show that. There was one example in the slides. I forgot, I'm not sharing screen still, but um, I use an image for the blurb that it was like, does your audience know who you are? And one of my clients opened up a book and put it over her face. And I thought, what a perfect thing. Does your audience know who you are? And here's a picture of a girl with a book covered. Like it just went together when I was looking for photos to put in there. I have a friend who's another amazing photographer, Shelby Dubin. I never mind shouting her out because she's just so awesome. And she and her friend have started this thing. I don't, you guys have probably seen it. It's massive takeover, a social rebel experience. I don't know if any of you have seen that. It is an amazing way. What they want to do is show you how to capture your own content on your phone so that you have great imagery to blend in with your professional brand photos. And they teach you really how to like video for reels. That's their moneymaker right there. 
but I got to photograph one of their little seminars and experiences. And I felt like I was stealing. I was like, I get all this knowledge for free. This is amazing. But one thing that stuck out to me is you have three different clients within your ideal client. You have those who have never worked with you before, those who have worked with you once, and those who are your VIPs. And I guess in the real estate industry, it'd be like if they use you two times, two or more, maybe they're buying investment properties from you or they're referring friends and family nonstop that it feels like, oh my God, it feels like I've sold 20 houses with this person. You have those three people. You have to be talking to all three of them. Too long, that hit me. So I'm like, wow, I always pose to attract new I was not spending enough time talking to those who've already been working with me. My VIPs, I should be tending to them. I should be doing as much as I can to increase the value so that they continue to come to me. I shouldn't always be marketing and looking at research of people who have never worked with me before. I need to make sure that I'm hitting all three of those people. And that suddenly opens up when you think about it, so many more doors for ideas for captions. And then you can find a way to build a brand shoot campaign around that copy. So you need to be thinking of all the things that you do or what questions each of those different three versions of your ideal client are going to have. Because if you're talking only about, here's what you can expect when you work with me, but I've already worked with you before, that's not really relevant to me anymore. You know what I mean? So that's where it's like, I, I'll give this example too. I, I'll say, like, I'm already in my home, right? Right. I'm really bad at gardening, but I want a really good garden. If there's a realtor who can give me tips on gardening, that'd be great. I'd love to follow for that. If you're the one, um, Lauren Groob, she does a great job of this. Love following her. She'll give tips of like, hey, it's spring, time to spring clean. That You should be cleaning your uh, air vents. Like her posts literally trigger me to get up and clean things in my house. I love that. It has to do with the home, but it's not buy or sell a house. It's here's how to maintain that beautiful home so that when it comes time to sell, it's going to be a piece of cake for her because all her clients have beautiful, clean homes that have been up to date. You know, here are appliances that might start to go in 10 years. Wish I knew that when I bought a 10 year old home. I can tell you that. <laughs> That's been fun having to replace all these appliances one by one. But had I been following someone that told me I could have probably negotiated better in my sale, maybe not in 2021, but you know. You never know. Yeah, we'll figure that out. <laughs> So yeah, does anyone have anything else? I know I ran way over. I'm so sorry, but this is all info that I felt was important for you guys to hear. I feel like you could talk about branding all day. It's weird, right? It is. I love it. <laughs> love what I do. I just wanted to say, like, I was going to try and shoot with you last October and I was way too busy. And I'm kind of <laughs> glad that I didn't because with the whole thing that you're talking about, like branding and niching and, you know, really figuring out yourself. And I feel like I've spent the last year doing that. And I think that now I would have a better photo shoot. Hey, oh my God, that's so awesome. I'm glad too. Like I, it's always at the right time, you know, you'll know, you'll know when that is. And what I do know is it's not October yeah. and it's never going to be October. No. <laughs> October is busy for me too. Both my kids were born in October. So it's pretty wild party time over here. Yeah. yeah. But also I feel like, um, don't wait. Right. Because it, part of me feels like, oh my gosh, there's so much preparation. I have to know my brand. I have to know what I'm bringing, but you said do it quarterly. So you're going to, you know, you're going to refine. Yeah, and not months, every brand shoot right? has to be all the props. Yeah, and all Cause the stuff. I have all no. this, you know, it feels like this huge mountain to get over to even show up the first time with you. Like, oh my gosh, I have to know what I'm doing. I have to know. And I do know my branding. I just, you know, then you're yeah. ready. It's more to protect your investment. I would hate yeah. for you to come in and be like, oh, I just, I spent all this money with you. And then I wasn't really clear. And I, I thought mm -hmm. I wanted this and I didn't. And then I don't want you to feel like it was a waste of your investment. That's right. all. But I your just, Zoom call should take care oh, of yeah. most of that, right? It's Absolutely. not like we have to go get a branding person to absolutely like refine it. Like, I think if we can meet with you via Zoom. No, that's more for people who don't have anything. Anything involved. set up. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Cause I've had that. And then cause they expect me to do it. Yeah. That's not your, that's not your job. And it's not. So I'm like, Ooh, I'm not responsible for that. And then you get some, some friction there that they're like, yeah. well, I thought you were going to help this. And yeah, oh, like, oh, you called my brand photo. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. like, it, it's more just as long as I think you're established. I know who you are and I've mm, seen your stuff. You. So yeah, I, I, 
it's more for those people who are just starting out because I think if you're going to hand money over to begin your business, you should hand it over to a brainy expert before a brainy photographer. Mm -hmm. I just do. Your yeah. cell phone takes really good pictures. There are just some things a cell phone can't do. And that's where I'm going to step in. And it's fun. And it's, it makes you feel different. I've had women come through and they're like, I feel like a different person leaving this branding shoot. It, it's like a self-esteem boost. It's that, again, that professionalism, not only to your client, but to you, you feel like a badass bitch when you leave my sessions. Like that's how you're supposed to feel. But people have, I've just seen some bad branding. And then those pictures are in with this, this ugly branding. I, I was going to use an example of a realtor, but I, I don't know if she's going to listen. So I don't want to call no, her. Let's out. not do that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to call it out, but the colors, it was so, it just looked like Lisa Frank in the nineties and it was really bad. And I just thought I, I didn't photograph her, but she, you know, had posted her branding for people to kind of give her advice on a logo. And it was terrible. It was terrible. And I just thought, man, if she would have invested in brand photos and she's putting them into this terrible branding, it's kind of a waste you know? So that's all I meant by that is mm -hmm. I think you should, if, if you're so unclear, it's best to go to a brand expert and, and get some sort of groundwork on there. Makes sense. Yeah, totally. I, I agree. Well, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. I this really appreciate this. This has been great and super helpful. So thank you so much for being on. And I don't know why you were so nervous about being the main person, like as if you didn't just talk for an hour and a half. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just get, it was more like, hey, you want to do this? And I didn't plan anything because I'm like, oh, I'm just going to have like a chat about branding with Nicole and uh, and Nikki. And then she's like, oh no, it's you in a presentation. I'm like, well, good thing I have one all set up. Just re oh. recycle, reuse, right? You know, it's good. <laughs> Your All teeth right. are so white, by the way, always. I never have to whiten your teeth in session because they're just so white. My God. <laughs> You're hilarious. All right. Thank but you. But also uh, correct. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's I'm not wrong. <laughs> oh, you guys are killing me. All right. Thank, Thank you, you guys so much. Have an awesome day, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Time.